I'm cooking wabbit tonight. That's right. Tonight, I'm going to be cooking the Easter Bunny. And um, my wife will be here um, after that to go cook some uh, rare bit. So for those who don't know what where that, that is, you're in for a treat. And for those that uh, have never cooked rabbit before, um, hopefully I'll get to teach you some new things tonight as well. So uh, just you can see in the top corner, here, that way, we've got our rabbit already uh, cleaned. And then I'll just butcher it. Uh, what I'll do to start is, um, in the past, I've, I've braised it whole. But I'm going to use a simpler recipe tonight so that for those who have never done this before, um, it'll be you know, easy to replicate. So just to explain, what I'll do is I'll cut it into uh, six pieces. And then we'll uh, saute them in a cast iron and um, toss in some aromatics deglaze it with some uh, wine and stock, and then we'll bake it. We'll roast it in the oven for like half an hour. And while that's going on, then my wife will come in to do some uh, rare bit. And uh, while she's cooking, I'll be preparing some sides as well. So we'll be doing um, a lot of multitasking tonight. So with, uh, without further ado, let's switch over to the overhead cam so we can work on the rabbit. Okay, so first things first, I get a big, I use a chef's knife. It's not like a meat cleaver or anything, but uh, we'll get the job done. Okay, so like I said, six pieces. And how are we going to do that? Well, we'll take the back legs off. like that. We'll take, we'll separate the front part. And then we're going to take the center part and cut it in half. So now we've got a quartered rabbit. And then we're going to split the back legs in half. So we have two distinct pieces. And then we're going to split the front. I just pick like cut along the spine through the neck. If you're squeamish, I apologize. But this is normal meat butchery. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Just like that. Um, next, you're going to want to, well, I'll pan over to the cast iron pan. Now you're going to be, you want to choose an oil with a fairly high smoke point. So in this case, um, I mean, ideally you'd use something like sunflower oil, but I've got olive oil. Olive oil should do you just fine. If you see, there we go. So that's the six pieces of rabbit. So yeah, basically you just want to let it, you want to sear each side five minutes each. So this is just big enough. for all six pieces.
and it's important to season while it cooks. A little salt, a little pepper. But yeah, my cast iron is the workhorse of this kitchen. How long have we had this? That 10 plus years? Yeah. Ah, the sound. I don't know if you can hear the sound of the sizzling meat, but I'll bring my camera a little closer. I mean, my mic. Yeah. So again, it's pretty simple. Loosen it up. We want to make sure it doesn't stick. All right, I'm gonna drop it to medium heat. Move this around. Make sure it doesn't stick. Oh, like this one's stuck. There we go. Got to loosen it. You got to be careful with rabbit because they don't have a lot of fat. So it's really easy to overcook and dry them out. Which is why even though I started on high, when I started searing it, I dropped it down to medium uh, when I flipped it over. Happy Easter! I mean, yes, uh, I am cooking the Easter Bunny. So, Happy Easter to those who uh, celebrate. I uh, hope I don't offend your senses by cooking the Easter Bunny. But you know what I say? It's like, look, if people have, people would have a problem with that, but they don't have a problem with turkey on Thanksgiving. So next time, I'm going to cook reindeer for, for Christmas. <laughs> Rip the Easter Bunny. Okay. I think we're coming on five here. So. Pardon the sound of dishes clanging. We're going to do a little bit of a transition. I'm going to move this cutting board over to the sink, wipe it down so there's no cross-contaminant. I think that's my phone. Okay. So we temporarily take the rabbit off of the, of, off of the pan. Sorry, so I'm not looking at chat right now. I'll catch up to it when I finish the next step. I'm just so happy y'all are here. Okay, so these bits here, don't worry about it. That's extra flavor. So that was five garlic cloves. And we're going to take... Um... <laughs> was I in the way the whole time? <laughs> Oh no! Alright, so here we go. How about here? You see that? You know, you could have told me I was in the way. Sorry, I looked away for a 
I'm looking over my wife. She's on the couch. I know she's watching the stream. Thanks. <laughs> I know, I know. They can't see my knife skills. What's up? All right. So we've got a big shallot. Cut it once on twice. Thrice up top, so you have a slice horizontal. Then down the length of it like that. There we go. And that's a chopped shallot into the pan. Give that a toss. All right, well, that's cooking. What did I miss in chat? Zen junk, yes, rabbit for Easter. Why not? Rabbit gravy. I will, yes. So that's kind of the intention of this is uh, the brown bits um, on the pan. Um, once I finish cooking through the aromatics, I'll put the rabbit back on it. I just think it smells good. Oh, okay. And then um, I'll deglaze the pan with some white wine. And let that evaporate and reduce, and then I'll add some chicken stock. And that I'll, then I'll put it in the oven, and then I'll switch places with my wife. So for the wine, I'm using a Cabernet Sauvignon. It's uh, not too dry, not too sweet, kind of in the middle. So if you're picky about wines, this is a perfect, I mean, if you're not picky about wine, this is a perfect choice because it's kind of right down the middle. But I would prefer for this dish a drier white wine. But again, I wanted to simplify this for folks who've never cooked um, with rabbit before. So there, one cup of the wine. I'll turn up the heat a bit to let it evaporate. What temp is rabbit supposed to be at? I believe it's 145. I'm making cheese on toast. Well, I'm making a rare bit, so there's a bit, there's quite a bit. Of, yes, cheese, a beery cheese. Alan, you might be more familiar with rare bit. Um, but yeah, it's my wife's gonna make a cheese with Guinness and uh, we'll put it on toast. How did you know? <laughs> okay, so that's kind of what I want. See how it's slow to reform, it's not super liquidy. All right, let's put the rabbit back in. Okay. Now some chicken stock. Easy peasy. Uh, where to put my dish towel? Ah. We're going to pop this in the oven for like half an hour. If I did like TV magic, I'd have had a second set of rabbit already done. Rabbit stock, yo, I should, I can, but you see, one, the, let me switch over to host. Right. 
I can if I had this rabbit didn't come with anything else. It was just the the meat on the bone. But in the past, depending on where I buy the rabbit from, it'll have like its innards, kidney, fat, liver, um, and that would make stock out of that. But this one was just rabbit and bone, so no stock. <laughs> I had to make my own. I would make my own otherwise. But okay, so here we're gonna transition over. Uh, the wife will come by. You can introduce yourself, and then uh, she'll she'll make her rare bit. Yay! Hi. So yes, well, the rabbit's in the oven. Um, I will be making instead of rabbit, rare bit. We'll let um, King Kong clear off. As you can see, I already have my. Uh, these in plus. Okay, yeah. So um, the components actually milk, uh, flour, one quarter cup flour. We're going to season the flour for the roux with some dried hot mustard. We are going to make the roux with the butter and then add Worcester sauce, salt, and pepper, which is already by the stove. And then finally, we are going to melt some freshly shredded cheddar. Um, I know you can buy cheddar already shredded in the store, and I do that for many things, but they usually say it's best to shred a block because they don't have whatever extra stuff they put on shredded cheese so that it doesn't cake together. So this was a just a regular block of English cheddar that I picked up at Trader Joe's. Um, simple as that. And then... Yeah, as soon as King Con's uh, cleared up the stove, I think I'm going to head over there. Right now, he's starting to, as you can probably see on the other camera, he's starting to hard boil eggs to put into the bunny. I'm not going to put it in the bunny. Okay, just serve with the bunny? Yeah, I'll serve it alongside. One year, you did stuff the rabbit with their hard boiled eggs. One I year, did, you did this. I did. Yes. Is my hair longer? Yes, which is why I have it Certainly my hair is. up in braids <laughs> because I am all about food safety. And because, yeah, my hair has gotten very long over the past year. No, but there's a difference between like your very nice normal bob versus mine. What bob? It's falling. It's <laughs> Anyway, go on. Okay, let me, I've got my pan, I've got my ingredients, let's see here. For you. Okay, great. Alright, so... First things first, we are going to make the roux. We are going to start melting the butter. Can you toss this for me? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, at this point, it's just letting it melt. Okay, you're going to beat on the hair part. Takashi, you have terrific hair. What are you talking about? Oh, I don't disagree. I, I, I do believe King Kong has magnificent hair. No, no, but uh, Takashi has really long flowing locks. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> yes. We all love long flowing locks of hair. What's up, Angry Spy? Just melting, melting, melting. Then. I really got to get it all melted. I always want to just like start adding things in right away. And I'm like, no, luscious. we have to get this better going. Actually says my hair is luscious. <laughs> luscious. All right, I'm not going to disagree with that. Nah, <laughs> we're good. Okay, now that it is melted, we're going to turn the heat down a little bit. And we are going to... Sprinkle in the flour. Right, I'm going to turn that heat down even lower. I don't want to scorch the flour until I've got everything mixed in here. Nika says she likes the melting salt. 
And now we are going to add in our hot mustard, um, you know, however your preference is. I do like mine spicy, so I add a little bit extra. And then some salts. And then... I'm going to say I, I usually go somewhere between like a quarter to a half a tablespoon, like see the pepper kind of overflowed that there, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, normally, honestly, I've made this so many times, I don't even really bother with using measurements, but I thought I would break out a measuring spoon for this special occasion. Well, yeah, folks who have never done it before. But yeah, I also remembered when I checked my source recipe that, you know, it always calls for like, oh, an eighth tablespoon of this, a quarter tablespoon of that. And I'm always like, that is never enough spice, even for something like rare bit. Maybe especially for something like rare bit that is just generally not spicy because of all of the milk and the cheese involved. You really have to add lots of like pepper and mustard and other great things for flavor. Now, you see how it's getting nice and dark and you see how it's kind of nice and smooth. We're almost ready to start adding some more ingredients, but I want to see it bubble a little bit more before the next one. This I always find is really tricky because on one hand you want to keep stirring it regularly so it doesn't scorch, but when you're stirring it all the time, it's not always easy to see if you're getting the right level of like bubbling or simmering or whatever else you need with this. Okay. That looks good. It's really pulling from the pan. It's thick. It looks pretty smooth. So now, next up, the milk. Whole milk really is best, but you can use whatever milk you have in the fridge. I mean, I, I would not go non-dairy for this one, really. If you're lactose intolerant like me, I would go with a lactose-free whole milk. Um, but you are just not, I just don't think you can get a good rare bit flavor with any, like, I, I just don't think rare bit is something you can make vegan. Well, I mean, if, if you can, if you've heard of a version, let me know in the comments and I'd love to try it. But yeah. You want to add this in slowly. because you don't want lumps. Well, that's a lot of this. It's a very simple recipe, but it's just a lot of having patience and getting really good at stirring and not just dumping everything in because you want it to be done and you want to eat already. Okay, that's it for the milk. And you can see that it's pretty much at this point, everything's still, again, not lumpy, nice and smooth, well incorporated. And now for the fun part, yes, the, oh, that makes a nice little crackly sound. Now we are going to add our beer. And that's going to be, one half cup, so right up to that line. Let's go also what's in the pot. What's in which pot? I guess the pot that you're making the rabbit in. Uh, what's in it right now? Um, right now it's the roux, so it's flour, dried mustard, salt and pepper, um, with milk and butter, and Worcester sauce. And the hot mustard, yes, I think I already said that. And now we are going to add the part where everyone, oh, it's a problem with Guinness. It's got that head, so you have to add more to make sure you get enough beer. Okay, half a cup 
of a nice dark Britishy beer. Um, generally, I mean, normally I wouldn't use Guinness for this. I prefer like Newcastle or another darker ale. I mean, like I'm normally a stout person, but you, you really don't want to put like a chocolate stout or a coffee stout in this. Um, but any kind of dark Britishy kind of beer will do the trick. Now, <laughs> well, I mean, Guinness, I mean, it, it's Irish. But, you know, British Isles, I guess. So, uh, Alan in chat is from Ireland, so. Okay, okay. Well, I, I hope, I, I, hope I, I haven't said anything. If I, I don't mean to offend. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why, like, I mean, the, the recipe was taught to me. I mean, I know it's called Welsh Rarebit. You know, um, but it was definitely taught to me in the form of going to like a colonial American open hearth cooking class way back in the day. So it was really this kind of idea of, you know, people coming over from England and making this as, as a kind of dish that people would eat in the 1700s or something like that. So that kind of informed my thinking about this. But, um, but again, I, 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 yes, well, I got to let for, again, this is this part where you want it to kind of start to simmer and get a little bubbly, but not too much so, because you don't want to scorch the milk. But what's nice about this is because of the roux and the other ingredients, even though I've added beer and milk together, it hasn't, it's not curdling at all. Um, okay, you see those little bubbles over those tiny little bubbles? That is exactly what I want right now. So now we start adding in the cheddar. <laughs> what? I am really happy. This is one of my all-time favorite foods. And I haven't had an excuse to make it in a long time. Do I have what? Yes, we have Kalamata olives, and I think we have uh, the the green ones. All right, so now, again, like we did before with the milk and melting the butter, you just kind of got to go slowly and let everything incorporate first before you add more. Otherwise? Well, otherwise, it's going to get clumpy. And... When you have a good rare bit, you know it's a good rare bit because you have this nice, really thick, yet very smooth sauce that just kind of coats the toast. So there we go. We have more of this. So just FYI, this is half a pound of cheddar. I basically bought a half a pound block at Trader Joe's. Um, eight ounces, if you will. You know, if you are if you are in a pinch and you can only get like the pre shredded stuff, your your typical eight ounce bag will do the trick, or two cups will work as well. Yeah, it's picking up really nice. Yeah, definitely. I haven't actually ever tried to make this with any cheese other than plain cheddar, like just just cheddar. I don't know if you would really get the right flavor if you used another cheese. Oh my god. Maybe, but I mean, it's possible, especially because in this case, the cheddar I'm using is fairly mild. I, I'm not using a sharp cheddar with this one. Um, I mean, we could try that sometime. All right, see there? Now it's almost there, but there's still some... You know, when I was, because the only problem is when you do manually shred the cheese, is I always get to that part where you get to those last little bits at the end that you can't really shred. So I was like, I'm just going to throw the whole chunks in there. And those are the chunks that are still there. So this is getting really nice and thick, which I like. I mean, you really should make this fresh, but I definitely make some and then eat it the next morning for breakfast. I think, 
Yes, we've definitely done rarebit nachos before. <laughs> we have done rarebit nachos before. But also, it's just kind of like a really satisfying breakfast. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's like cheese on toast. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's really what it is. All right, but I think we are, we are all set. So I'm going to move this out of the way so I can plate. Okay, yeah, here, why don't you put some of this away for me, but not the beer. That's for me for later. And now, because I was thinking, like, a Food Network cooking show, I already toasted my bread in advance. And I'm getting... I'm just going to kind of ladle it on. It's so nice when it just kind of spills over the edge and gets really gooey. You know, you're going to want to eat this with a fork and a knife probably anyway. And you don't have to toast the bread first, but I think it's a lot nicer when it's toasted. Also, how is the connection for people? Could you hand me the paprika, please? Okay, finally, this is definitely not traditional colonial American style. But I personally like to top mine with a little bit of smoked paprika. Ta-da! Rustic, delicious, beery, cheesy, bready. It's rare bits. Okay. Delicious, beery, cheesy, and bready. It's rare bits. Well, my job is done. I am glad to have made something while the rabbit is still, has what, about 13 and a half minutes in there. But I also see that uh, King Con's got some eggs going, some other great stuff. So do you want to uh, take back over? Yeah. All right, so what I got next, again, what is rabbit without carrots? I'm going to make a classic, just glazed carrot dish. This is going to be very simple. No need to like prepare the carrot in any particular way. So no need to like cut it. Um, you will need some butter. Um, all right, so. I mean, classic, I guess you can say it's a French preparation. Seven minutes till the... Yeah, you know. Eh? Yeah, I, I think I should eat some of that bread. Yes, have some of your bread. Here. You want to eat over here at the counter? Mm-hmm. Hey, how about this? How about... The only one that lasts a while for me is a dead fish, yikes. And the no, parfla. this lasted a while. It's right. still going. You, you, can, you, you, you can do a little mini mukbang while I, I cook mm -hmm. the rest of the carrot. I like these like rainbow carrots. Purple. Orange, yellow, white, I guess. I'll do uh, two of each color. So basically, you just want to saute them till soft. So what? What's up? I'm going to say that. Yeah, but if you type in chat, you'll be typing as me. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. So carrots have a natural sweetness to it. 
But um, for glazed carrots, I'm going to help it along. So add to the caramelization. So I just add sugar directly to the pan. Just a pinch. The jelly bean? Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, it's getting a nice little sear to it, too. So yeah, just like a pinch of sugar on top of like uh, the, the butter that's already roasting the carrots. But if you really want to gild the lily, use honey. Now you might think it is too sweet, but remember the, the rabbit is quite savory in of itself. Right, I allowed um, a sauce reduction, so it's going to have a really concentrated flavor. And I think the sweetness of the of this glazed carrot is going to break up and cut into that really savory flavor. That's kind of where they get the carrots. Carrots were originally purple. Wow. Mhm. Mm and what, so it was just bioengineered to go orange? Probably. Your carrot looks like the chili I cook with my curry. Yeah. Yeah. Farmer Alan. I mean, Alan, you're not quite a farmer, though. You're, uh, you're a beekeeper. That's cool. I love that. And apparently an accountant. Oh, wow. This, I love Twitch because we can meet fascinating people mm -hmm. from all over the world. All right. Okay, that's getting very caramelly. The glaze is good. What do we got? This bread is definitely all better. I still find it funny that um, the, the bot is talking. Mm -hmm. The uh, the dancing Retsuko bot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I know it's Retsuko, but it's also a bot. Crazy. It's sentient. <laughs> oh, that rabbit smells good. Oh, and it's ready. Okay, let's switch back to the oven cam. Let's clear the way. Ooh. Looks good. Okay, so... <clears throat> Let's plate this bad boy. Okay. Let's do it. Let's rearrange some stuff. The second tongs, the smaller ones. Sorry, I'll just rinse this one out. Okay, time to plate rabbit and then rare bit. So this should be for like 
two portions. So what I'll do is there's one back leg, one foreleg, and then one of the middle pieces. Get some of that um, white wine reduction with the uh, shallots and garlic. And then I have some fresh thyme growing here, so I'm just going to cut off some sprigs. How's it going there? Mmm, tasty. It is. You do get that gamey flavor that's inescapable with um rabbit. So the texture is like chicken, but the flavor is very much gamey because you get for those who understand what gamey means. Most farm animals they have a lot of fat, right? Um so you get a lot of that fat infusing into the meat for the flavor. But with game meat, like wild animals, they don't have a lot of fat because they're working out all the time. Oh, did the did the wow not work? Maybe the audio for the wow didn't work on because I'm on a different OBS. When was the last time I made a dessert? Um, not too long ago, but I didn't stream it. <laughs> right, so here's the glazed carrot. It's still, it's softer, but it's still got a crunch to it. And now, for the hard boiled egg with the rare bit on it. So cheesy egg. It's cheesy beery egg. You know what it is? It's a deconstruction of holidays. Yeah. Mmm. I like it. Well, I hope you all had fun watching me and my wife cook together. We don't cook together like this that often, but um, it is something we like to do. Obviously, I like to cook.